Greetings, children of the screen. Your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again, and today I wanted to take just a few minutes to talk to you guys about X-Men number one. By Hickman, you, Alan Gillian, Cho, Cows, and Muller. Right on, guys. So this book is the follow-up to Powers of X and House of X, and I want to let you guys know going into this, I unfortunately wasn't able to actually read through all of those. I read the first two issues of Powers and the first issue of House of X, but unfortunately, this book is one of those that everyone wanted to read, but no one put it on their pull list until a week before it came out, and most stores through Diamond, you had to start ordering like issue one and two like three months earlier. So I ended up having to give up all of my issues of House of X and Powers of X to customers. So please keep in mind that there are some things that happen in that book that are set up in that book that are probably like at play in this that I'm not aware of. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. So we open the book with Professor X and Scott Summers. We basically get the scene where the professor first put Scott's uh, ruby quartz glasses on him and is getting him to open his eyes and he sees the world in a new way for the first time in his life. And then from there we cut to the present day where we see the uh, main team of X-Men liberating a group of like teenage mutants that are being held in this facility. Again, I'm sure it was set up in House of X or Powers of X. I'm not sure of the name of the facility. Doesn't matter. They go, they break them all out, they kill a bunch of human dudes who are in their way, and then they use one of those cool... Uh, Krakoan flowers to open a portal back and they leave. And then once we get on Krakoa, once again, like, I know that they established this in the previous books, but we see that on Krakoa, everyone gets to be the person they've always thought themselves to be. Magneto gets to be the hero and the leader that he's always wanted to be. You know, Scott gets to very much be, like, the moral center leader that he has always seen himself as. Storm gets to be, like, the powerful, compassionate warrior. Like, all of the characters that we see get to be their absolute perfect self. And again, I know that's set up previously, but it's nice to reiterate it here, especially for people like me who didn't get to read the previous issues. And then from there, we find out that Scott is going home because Havoc and his dad and basically his son, his whole family, they're there. They're going to have like a family meal. Um, so he, you know, takes his little Krakoan teleport flower and he goes home. And uh, basically, we get this like nice little scene between Gabriel and Wolverine where like Gabriel's cooking uh, Wolverine's steak and it's just like fun banter going on. Um, and really like Throughout the whole course of this dinner, we just kind of meet up with these characters. Because, again, I feel like Hickman is really trying to do this issue in a way that if you read all the previous books, which you need to, this has a lot more going on. But if this is the first one you're reading, he is definitely reintroducing you to a lot of the ideas, themes, and elements. Because, in truth, not a whole lot happens in this issue. Um, so, again, they have dinner, and then Scott has, like, a nice little talk with his dad, you know? And then from there, we cut back to this new, like, forge facility that is out in space where like the group of the like humans who are after the mutants have set up their new base and they're basically holding funerals for all the people that X the x-men killed and eventually at the end of this you find that one of their main scientists has basically her husband was a soldier who died in the like attack and she has basically utilized one of the cool little crystals that we saw in the previous books to she's basically going to resurrect him so it's this new idea that, like, while the X-Men and the people on Kakoa have this ability to kind of, like, come back through cloning or reincarnation, again, guys, I know the basic gist of House of X and Powers of X, but I'm not super, super familiar with all the details of it. I know that the crystal is how the mutants were coming back, specifically Emma Frost in the other books. So, yeah, it looks like basically we are setting up the humans and the mutants to have, like, this immortal war. But other than that, we don't really know a whole lot about what's going to be happening in terms of the plot. And that's kind of all we get in this book. Now, I say that's all we get in this book, but that makes it sound like there's not much going on. But the truth is, the writing in this book, it's Hickman, man. It's absolutely fantastic. All the characterization is perfect. The kind of weird metatextual way that he's handling this story where he keeps referring to, like, you know, how the X-Men have always been trying to relive the past and stuff like that is very much how Marvel Comics is always trying to take X-Men back to, like, the Claremont era. You know, they're always trying to, like... Or even, like, you know, when Bendis brought back the young X-Men, they're always trying to take X-Men back to a previous point where their popularity was at its peak as opposed to, like, progressing the franchise and the story and the characters forward. And that's definitely what Hickman is doing with this, and he puts it into the text. It's not just things that you have to read into it. So that's very interesting. It definitely fills you with promise that this book is going somewhere very different, and it's Hickman, so if he's allowed to do what he wants to do, I have no doubt that it will. So in terms of the artwork on the book, again, it is really, really solid. It's one of those things where the writing and the artwork, when you first look at these books, if you haven't read House and Powers, I don't think it's actually intended to, like, blow your mind. I think it's supposed to look like a pretty standard comic, as it's, like, the entry level. Having said that, the art in it is all really solid. Lionel Francis Yu's artwork is 
usually 99% of the time absolutely awesome, and this book is, you know, no exception to that. I will say, like I said, there's not a whole lot of shots that are just like these big, epic, like, dramatic moments. Like, no, it's very much more about bringing you into the world, introducing you to the characters, and using the art to kind of accommodate that. So it works out very, very well. I will say that the use of color in the book is absolutely fantastic. When we're on Kakoa, the color effects, uh, not just the colors themselves, but the color effects for lighting and stuff, it definitely gives that feeling of paradise. Same when we're on the Summer's Home, which, by the way, is on the moon. I left that little part out, because, like, Krakoan, like, uh, soil or kind of, like, the essence of Krakoa can grow anywhere, and it's connected. So, basically, Scott decides to live on the moon, because they can basically terraform it using the Krakoan stuff for their purposes. You know, the stuff on the moon is very warm, but yet it's, like, dark and desolate and isolated all around them, you know, on the moon. So, yeah, the use of color in this book definitely is what makes the artwork sing. The artwork itself is very subdued, but it's also very, very good. So yeah, in closing, guys, X-Men number one was really awesome. Again, like, there's no big, huge, like, groundbreaking, like, mind-blowing, like, oh my god, you gotta read this book! It's just well-written, with good art that perfectly executes the characters in this great story that like seems very simple and straightforward but it's Hickman so we know it's going to get crazy yeah this is a great start to this book I'm really happy with it I cannot wait to go back and read House of X and Powers of X so I can actually get the full effect of everything that's going on in here but needless to say I highly recommend it it'll be on the store's shelves tomorrow definitely go check it out guys and if you like this video please leave a like share it with some friends and if you're not subscribed make sure to subscribe so you can check out all the dope content i got coming out here in the future also tomorrow if you do check this book out let me know down in the comments below what you thought of it thank you very much children of the screen hope you all have a good one nerd scum out